pawn system is a huge part of Dragon's Dogma 2. From your main pawn to the two you'll be swapping out constantly throughout your journey. But how do you know what the best pawn to take for the given scenario? What pawns should you be looking for? In this video, I want to show you how I take a look at pawns based off of their role to help you decide the best way to fill your party out. If this is your first time on my channel, the way I do things is by offering the knowledge of my videos so you can decide if it's the right one for you. So the best way to approach this is by going to the Rift and setting your browse options to be weapon skill based. From here, you'll be able to see if you're grabbing, say, a mage with a boon or affinity spell or a fighter with the taunt ability, thief with the pilfer ability, so on and so forth. Even further, you can inspect each pawn to look at all their currently active core skills and augments to really hyper-focus your selection. Sure, a fighter is great, but if they don't have their taunt ability nor taunt augment, are they going to fit the role you want them to in your party? This is, of course, going to be up to you and what you're looking for. But that's really the gist of what we'll be covering. If that's all you wanted to know, please feel free to shut the video down and get back to summoning pawns and spreading the dragon's plague. Before you do, please don't forget to comment or like, like, comment, or subscribe, any one of three of those, if this video helped you out, as that does have a huge impact on my channel. And if you've not yet picked up Dragon's Dogma 2 for the PC, you can use the link to my Capcom affiliated store in the comment and description. This will give you a key directly from the developer, and I get a 20% commission, which goes a long way towards supplying my mini Aussie's vicious treat addiction. You can also find my pawn code in the description as well. But let's get started here on choosing the best pawns in Dragon's Dogma 2. So we're here in the rift, and like I said, what I would usually do is jump over here to weapon skill. This is the easiest way to get an idea of what something is going to have on them, of course. Now, some other big things to just kind of know, some general information. Um, things are going to cost you zero rift crystals if they are your level or lower. And then for every level above, it goes up an exponential amount. Like it goes from, if I'm looking at a level 34 person, or I'm level 31, uh, uh, so a level 32 is an extra 31 crystals. A level 33 is an extra 35 crystals on top of that, so it's 68. I don't know the equation, I don't know the, the percentage increase, but it goes up every level beyond yours. Now, you can also get people for free if you um, have them on your friends list, your Steam or your Xbox or PlayStation friends list. You can come over here to the Rift Crystal and get them for free. But that's some big information, and before we even jump into more of that, uh, you can also search for a pawn and do advanced pawn search. So this can be ways that you can go ahead and go through any of the six vocations that pawns can be. They cannot be any more than these six. And you can kinda, you can jump down to gender and race. You can go into quest knowledge if they have knowledge of your priority quest. So if you're stuck somewhere set, on a specific quest, set that as your priority and press yes here when you do pawn search, you'll be able to know. Inclinations, so basically the way their AI works, so prioritize support and is quick to aid heals, prioritize defense to ensure survival. Um, so basically, like if I kind of wanted, say, a fighter, and I wanted them to be a tank, I would do something like this, and then search by a specific weapon skill, maybe at uh, um, shield summons, and then this would give me a probably the best tank, right? Because the inclination is to be defensive to ensure survival, or... Um, I would have shield summons to let them uh, uh, actually do taunting, stuff like that. So you can see how this stuff all kind of has a means or a reason behind all of it. So this is how you would do that pawn search. And like I said, to friends that are uh, on your, your list, this character is level 48. That is 15 levels above me or 16 levels above me. So this cost is zero. So if you have people that you use the pawns of a lot, you can actually even just send them a friend request and then you can use their, their pawn for free. Even the ones you've favorited, they still are gonna cost you. The, this what happens, Spartacus is a favorited one who's also, that guy's personally my friend, that's Rob. So I know that it, Rob's pawn is always gonna be zero for me. Alora was like my very first pawn that I ever had. This thing's now gonna cost me 2,000 um, rift crystals so you can see how this all does have an effect on things and how it really does come around to selecting the best pawn for yourself you can also search by pawn id mine is in the description so you can pop your the id in here and that's how you would get my little uh thief pawn but now let's talk about the individual roles and break these locations apart well, let's start off by looking at both the fighter and the warrior characters that can kind of inhabit the same general role within your party depending on how you want to use them do you as another fighter want to have another fighter alongside you however you want to have this kind of done 
Or do you want to have a warrior alongside you if you're a warrior? Or do you want to just have that warrior come around and just slap things apart? So we're going to take a look at this character real quick. Just this random one. I haven't even looked at him yet. And when you talk to them, you can look at view pawn details. Thank you. Yes. This is crucial. So this is where we're going to get all of our information. This is what we're going to use throughout the entirety of this video. And yeah, it's going to give me stuff like their status and stuff like that, their vocation. I can see what levels they've got. Okay, this person's got a super high uh, um, thief. Great. But what I want to see is this, their weapon skills. So we see they have burst strike, gouging skewer, and shield drum. Cool. Shield drum's great. This is that taunt. that I, I, I know that that's active on the character. This is perfect. Okay, well, what about this one? Well, so this is not an offensive capability. Um, well, not necessarily, right? But you can actually use this to get to places you cannot reach in the game. If, you're, you're, if it's not that far up, the character will say, Master, I can help you. You press go, you know, the up arrow on your D-pad, or I think it's one on the keyboard, and they will springboard you either onto a monster in this case, as you can see, or to a ledge that you maybe can't re you reach. So I can see, okay, they've got shield drum. The, the advanced form of this is, is shield summon. Oh, I'm sorry. Shield summon is the, uh, the base version. This, the advanced form of shield summon is shield drum here. But now what about core skills? Let's take a look here. Okay. All right. Well, Hey, I've got defend. Good. I've got deflect. Good. I've got true deflect even better. Steel Foundation, oh, this is fun for dropping, Enhanced Counter, Gender Counter, and they've got Metal, and boom, they've got Provocation. So I want to make sure I'm looking at their core skills to see mainly if they've got certain ones. Like for the tank, the core skills don't really matter to me as much. It's Metal and Provocation. I want to make sure they've got these two. This is going to enhance their physical defense, and this allows them to actually be better at just taunting stuff. Increases the likelihood of being targeted by foes. So I know I've got a good taunter in here. Or if I look now over here, like I said, they've got this ability, so I know it's there. So if I kind of scoop around the rest of this, this is all just set to be fighters and warriors. I can see, okay, let's look at Cherry. Okay, Shield Drum is on there. I don't even have to take a look. Okay, so that's a good one to kind of take a look at. Riotous Fury, Burst Strike, Flawless Guard, and Launch Board. Well, you can count on me to fly to your aid in your this character defense. might not be the best tank, but it could be a lot better at being a, what am I, am I, am I oh, I'm looking at the Risen, well, I was like, wait a minute, um, might not be the best tank, but I now know that, okay, they've got Burst Strike, they've got Riders Fury, these are two pretty good DPS ones, the Launch Board one, that's cool utility, and then Flawless Gore, Gar, Gord, uh, Guard is a kind of like a defensive utility spell, right? Uh, ability. Do they have... Okay, so they can still do provocation. So this character can still be kind of more of an offensive tank within the party. And this is how I would take a look at these characters that I see around me. To look at that Girthmus Maximus. So, and you might, if you don't do this, if you were just to kind of look at it by default, and you just kind of go, I don't know if any of these have, some people, some people, some, sometimes some people just set up like booty skills. Okay, like sometimes you just see like one ability on the character. Like, well, I'm not going to be taking this one. Like, let's say we wanted, all these have shield drum. Let's say we wanted one of these warriors and they did not have, um, this is a good example. Let's say we wanted this one to just strictly be a tank. No offensive capabilities. I just really want you to focus on tanking. Well, he doesn't have shield summon. I don't know if he has the enhancement. And if I were just to kind of take this at whatever the, uh, the game shows me, then I don't know what kind of character I get. So it's important to kind of dive into these. And you can even come over here to this and kind of search for a pawn and you can view all these other ones, unique pawns, linked rift stones, stuff like that. But you can also, if I say, let's just say doing this one, you can look at this list and set it by weapon skill as well to get an idea of what's going just by looking at these lists. So you don't have to kind of peruse through here, but another portion of this is the, is the warrior, right? So let's take a look here at Geralt of Rivia, Geralt of Rivia. And I hope it's still played by Henry Cavill. And we'll look at the pawn details. So I can see that this pawn, location-wise, he's got heavenward sl uh, slender, sunder. Cool. So he's going to be able to do some vertical. You've got goring lunge. Okay. he got revivified. There's a little bit of utility here. Second wind for curing them of some debilitations. Not too crazy for what I would want for my warrior. Savage lash. Okay. Um, great. Cool charging strike. So... 
I've got some pretty cool capabilities here, and I can look at the core skills. Good, we're gonna see some good damage. Got some barge, got his bulwark. What about his augments? Okay, he's got vitality for the hit points. This for pushing and pulling targets. Now he's got this from fighter. Now that was something I wanted to look for. Does he have the fighter capabilities? And this is cool too, by looking at the vocation, I know that he's got a max rank fighter. So I know that I can expect some augmentations in here from fighter, such as metal, such as provocation. So maybe I want this warrior to be more of a defensive and taunting warrior. Well, he's got the capability to do so here with provocation and metal, even though he is not going to be using like a shield summon. Um, but you know what? Maybe we really want that character to be a taunter. So we'll go with Roar. Are you certain you're happy to have me along? I always am. Uh, pawn details. So the vocation. And I see, hey, okay, this is a max rank warrior. And we've got a rank six fighter, so we can expect metal or other things on here that'll help with taunting. Roar, an advanced form of bellow that becomes more likely to draw the attention of foes with additional button presses. So cool, I know that he can do that, and he's got provocation, so great. This warrior can actually now tank for me, and I've got it all set up. I can look at the rest of their the stuff here. You know, I've still got some good verticality. I've still got some good uh, uh, mobility, and we've got a really good ability to just nut punch a... <laughs> Not punch a, a Cyclops right here. So this is how I dive into looking at warriors and fighters. And it doesn't need to be that I'm looking at this from the stance of defensive capabilities. I can just simply look at all these like full moon slash uh, cloud word slash shield drum and flawless guard. Yeah, a shield drum is definitely going to be helpful for for taunting, but the rest of those are pretty offensive. Um, sounds like I'm saying like they're, they're offensive to me. Uh, or this character here doesn't have all three. So I'm just not going to choose them. Um, this one, Raising Sweep, Heavenward Sunder, Ladder Launch, and Arc of Might. I mean, I'm going to get a pretty good offensive warrior here. So that's a really great way to take a look at your fighter and your warrior characters. Now, what about our mages and our sorcerers? Now, this is going to be interesting because sorcerer does not fit the same scope that a mage does, but you'll still get a lot of the same things from mage as you might want on a sorcerer. And I think that's going to come down to you and how your party's set up. So let's take a look at Joanna here for one. She is a sorcerer. And by looking at pawn details, okay, well, A, I can see she's got a high level. Oh, wow. High level of mage, so we're probably going to get some stamina regeneration here, which is helpful because that's how they get their, um, uh, that's how they do their damage, right, through stamina. Well, I can see, okay, we're going to get a uh, freezing spell. We're going to get a lightning spell. We're going to get another lightning spell. And we're going to get an earth spell. And maybe I'm playing an archer. And as an archer, I have drenched arrow. And if I have drenched arrow, well, you know what? Having two lightning spells on my characters are really going to help me out. Or maybe, or drenching arrow, sorry. Maybe I'm an archer still and I'm using the capability to throw oil onto things. Well, now I'm probably going to want... A sorcerer that's got a lot of fire spells, whatever it is. We have Galvanize here to rapidly recover their, their own stamina. But if I look at their augments, I've got their knockdown resistance, uh, increased amount of health recovered by curatives and curative magic. Uh, there it is. There, uh, uh, where is it? There it is. Exaltation. It augments your stamina recovery speed. Okay, I know this character is going to have high amounts of stamina to keep their, their casting online for a good amount of time. And debilitations are, what is wrong with my controller? Abdulitations are going to be likely to kick on because of asperity. So it's just kind of important to look at these things for Sorcerer, but Sorcerer is going to be less of, hey, I looked at Fighter and Warrior, and it's, how am I going to drill into this? It's a little bit easier to pick out a Sorcerer because I can kind of just look around and go, okay, cool. You've got High Salamander. Well, great. I wanted a lot of uh, um, fire abilities over here too. Okay, what about over this direction? Uh, those are our, okay cool you've got high flagration and you've got decanter great so this character here is maybe going to fit a little bit more into what i want to do because i'm focusing on certain stuff like sap the target's health and grass it to the caster i've got the blizzard i've got lightning and i've got um fire now so this covers a lot of different bases for me and that helps out when it comes to your sorcerer but what about mage mage fits a different role entirely right so let's just take a look at this one's pretty good. I shall be proud to serve you, so mage has su support abilities, right? And obviously, that's one right here. Anodyne. Anna, yeah, Anodyne. Conjures a magical curative sigil that recovers the health of the caster and their allies. This is a pretty important one. They also get levitate, which, you know, the sorcerer does too. Um, this is helpful in the same way that springboard is, that they can actually go and get chests for you. Um, but 
we can get stuff like augmenting their magical defense all their their augments in here too um sagacity augments your magic i believe that's actually from sorcerer but they actually don't have the um the one for their stamina generation probably enough but their weapon skills yeah they've got offensive ones but they have affinities now affinity is the upgrade of a boon you have fire boon you've got a lightning boon you all also have high halidom which is going to remove debilitations and the standard duration cures the debilitations caught fire frostbite unconscious sleep silence drenched tarred touched torched <laughs> icebound and blighted or argent sucre uh, an advanced form of argent tonic that gradually continues to recover health for a period of time so i get a buffer in here i get a healer and i get a you know final fantasy version of of cure so I have that on this character or high palladium, which is going to help me out defensively, but high Levine and uh, flagration, I'm still going to get some damage out of this character. So the sorcerer is obviously going to be adding damage to your, to your, to your party, but this character, nope, 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 nope. The mage here, oh, the mage here. Okay. Maybe I just want one that's going to give me ice affinity and fire affinity. And then I've got uh, the cure or the, um, the heal and I've got the cure in here as well. And then their, their general cure that just is base part of their class. This is the support mage I want. So this is going to depend upon you as well. You know, are you playing a character that can access a specific element on their own? I'm playing thief and I can light my own blades on fire. I don't need fire affinity. It'll help out the rest of my party. Sure. But maybe I want to focus on ice affinity so I can actually light my blades on fire my at will and use fire affinity, or I'm sorry, ice affinity, whenever I need it. Or I know I'm gonna go into a location where there's a bunch of undead and I'm playing um, an archer and having access to different affinities at different times is gonna be super helpful, especially if it comes to me using specific arrows to coincide with that. So looking at these weapon skills and how they kind of play with your party is gonna be pretty crucial to deciding whether or not you want an offensive, a defensive, a buffing mage, or just a specific elemental focused sorcerer. Now archer is another interesting one because archer is gonna be dependent upon, do you want a bunch of range damage and do you need it to be any kind of special kind of setup effect, right? Like if we take a look at um, torrent shot, cascade shot, tempest shot, um, yeah, we'll take a look at that. A well-organized pack is my specialty. We'll go here. We'll go vocation and tempest shot here. Advanced form of torrent shot that fires a greater number of arrows. So cool. Now I have a character that's going to just shoot a bunch of stuff and be able to support me and do big heavy damage with this. Or cascade shot for some cone area of effect right, right in front of them. Or manifold shot for barrage shot. All these abilities that's going to help me out. And jumping down here, okay, I know they've got endurance for increased stamina. They unfortunately, though, don't have, they have lethality, so they're going to do more damage to the vitals. That's great. They don't have the thief characteristic that makes it so they take, that they like draw less aggro, but still, it's all helpful nonetheless. So I've got these capabilities on this archer, but I'm trying to find, I mean, Noctuous Arrow is kind of okay. I want to talk about Tempest Spiral, Noctuous, of course. Aha! My talents lie in combining so materials. maybe I want this archer. Did I choose the wrong one here? I definitely did. Oh, no, I looked at the reason. Um, maybe I want this archer who is now going to bring erupting shot to the table so they can now blow things up for me or use Noctua shot, which will now deliver blight onto things for me. And remember, they also have the ability to light things with, well, not light things on fire, but, but coat them with oil or drench them. Oh, here it is, Tarring Shot. This is one I was looking for the entire time. Um, and they can use this in conjunction with their own action, right? They can use Tarring Shot and then Exploding Shot, and they can get plenty of uh, benefit. But maybe I'm playing a Mage, and I've got tons of Fire. Or maybe I'm playing a Sorcerer, and I've got Fire. Or a Thief, and I've got Fire. Or any other character that can tap into Fire in a very quick manner. Or just another Archer. Tarring Shot sets me up for success, because now I can tap into that. And Drenching Shot, which I don't think I can see on any of these... Um, I don't see it. I think erupting shot is the is the non-upgraded one. Discipline your company lacks. No, I that's dumb. I just looked at erupting shot. I swear this video is helpful. Um, but drenching shot 
coats them in water. And now I can lean into that if I'm ha if I have access to lightning from any one of my capabilities as a mage, as a, as a sorcerer, what have you. Or just having drenching shot on your archer when you have another mage who is using lightning affinity. You can combo these things together. So I think by and large, my archer is probably going to be something like this one. Deathly, Tempest, Manifold, and Cascade. Those are all the big kind of big shots I want or heavenly shot if I want to get the uh, the special ability. But by and large, I think it's like this is your typical archer. Delivers all the range damage that I need in all the big punchy ways. Last but not least, we have Thief. And Thief is really fun. It's a really, really fun class to play. If you have not played it, please go play it. But when it comes to Thief, I kind of don't care what I choose when it comes to their abilities. They're, they're all, a lot of their abilities are just so good. I look at stuff like Ensnare, and I really like that. But I also look at Plunder. And that's a big one that I want to focus on here because if I'm going to go against like a special monster, specifically maybe a dragon, you can steal. I got it, lady. You can steal from them. Whoa. Uh, you can steal unique items that you wouldn't be able to get otherwise. So Plunder, an advanced form of Pilfer, and Pilfer is the non-upgraded version, that increases the likelihood of stealing a rare item. That is crucial. And you want this to work in conjunction with Bump and Lift. This is a core skill you want to make sure that that thief has active. I think it's like rank 3 or 4. Robs the target of an item when an attack connects. Activates when using Carve, which is just their basic attack, but it has a low success rate. So those two things in conjunction, right? Bump and Lift and Plunder and or Pilfer is going to do a couple of things. For one, it has a chance of helping you get those rare items and you can have it on yourself too. So if the, your pawns have it and you have it, it drastically increases the chances of it. But furthermore, if you're trying to get a bunch of materials, this just through, sends your materials through the roof. You just get so many going at any given time. The other ones here too, like Implicate, which is the uncredited version of Ensnare, is really good because you can do stuff like this, right? Um, and what's, I don't know if this person has it. Hopefully they do. Damn. Well, maybe I'll be able to show you by looking at their warrior. So warrior has, ah, uh, damn. Warrior has an ability to increase the amount that they push and pull things. And that can work in conjunction with anyone who has either implicate or ensnare. So if you're looking for the augment on that, on their, on their, uh, uh thief, it helps to draw a little bit more into the character. Other things though, for augment here are, um, lethality, which goes from our archer, right? Uh, but I don't have it on here. It was the one that actually reduces their, their threat generation, which can be pretty nice. But masterful kill is really good. Advanced form of easy kill that can be employed in midair. And they basically just instant gib something, just kill it outright. Or Skull Splitter, which is an upgraded form of Helm Splitter. It just does so much damage. I mean, like, just these two spill abilities alone, you're totally fine. You don't need to go into, like, the Master abilities here. Ignited Blades is fine. Like, there's all sorts of other ones. They're all good. So you really can't go wrong. But I think the big focus of taking a pawn is having another character that has got the capability to steal for you. And that's one of the best things about selecting your pawn or your Thief Pawn is getting that additional layer of stealing. And one last thing I want to talk about before we end our video here is the Dragon's Plague. I have personally never encountered it, but when you go to hire a pawn, take a look at their eyes. If they are, you'll see red eyes, that's fine. No, I don't want to do that. But if you see glowing red eyes, that is not fine. That is a character that has early onset uh, Dragon's Plague, and they will spread it to your pawn, and if they do so... It has a chance of like breaking your save is I guess the way to, to say it, but more or less like your pawn becomes unruly and more and more less likely to follow you, all sorts of things. They just kind of become a nuisance. So just when you're selecting pawns, make sure you just kind of take a look real quick, just kind of like look at their eyes. I mean, no one here I think has it. Kind of like, oof, like it's pandemic all over again now. But more or less, like I said. Just check their eyes, make sure you're good. I feel like in a video like this, if I didn't mention that, I'd be doing you guys an injustice. So. Um, there's even like some that I'm like, that's a little sus for me. I'm not choosing. Like, this guy's fine. But like, if he had like super red eyes and he's not glowing red eyes, I'm like, no, no, I'm not going to risk it. I, I don't want to, I don't want to lose control of my character in any way, shape or form. But just make sure you check those things out. And at that, it brings our video here to a close. So hopefully this helps you out in 
trying to decide which pawns to bring, or at least how to bring the pawns into your party and figure out which ones work best for you. Like I said, if you're playing a fighter, maybe you don't want another mage. Maybe you want another warrior alongside you. Or maybe if you are playing fighter, you want a character that's going to buff you and not be offensive. So you want a mage, whether this is a sorcerer or an archer, whatever it is. And this is going to work over this is going to work for your main pawn this is going to work for your other two pawns however you want to spice those things up but this is mainly kind of looking at how you're going to pull these pawns in from the rift and best utilize the abilities that you see rather than just simply going okay this person cost me zero i'll go grab this guy and then they just don't help out your party because they don't really have the abilities to do so but as always, guys, thank you so much for watching here today. If you have any suggestions on ways to get really good pawns or anything like that, go ahead and let it be known in the comment section below. I, I didn't talk about how you can go to Forgotten Riftstones, the broken ones on the map that they have a little broken symbol. And those will typically give you a stronger pawn, but it'll be zero cost. So they'll have a higher level than you. It's just zero. So that's a cool way to get uh, better pawns if you want to go down that route. But as always, thank you so much for watching. Have a good one and take care.